Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel Python for Microscopists. In the previous tutorial, I described uh, what features are for machine learning, especially for supervised machine learning. And today, let's actually write some code to generate these features in Python. And just a quick reminder again, when we mean by features, especially for image processing, uh, in this context, what I mean is applying a bunch of filters that describes the data, that describes your images. So this is the example I've used in the previous uh, tutorial. So the features that describe uh, the regions of interest in this case are primarily the pixel value, right? In this case, the image pixel value itself is a good feature, but in addition to that, there could be other features like edge detections and other filters that can enhance the information that I'm providing the machine learning algorithm. So uh, let's go ahead and start coding and I'll talk about how to apply these filters. Again, I've done this uh, a while ago in one of my previous tutorials uh, where I talked about how to apply various filters to your images. But again, I'm going to repeat that. But more importantly, I'm going to talk about, OK, once you apply this, how do you create the data frame uh, uh, that captures the feature vectors? OK, so let's uh, dive into uh, the coding. Let me open Spider IDE the IDE that we have been using uh, to write our code. So here is the spider interface. And uh, let's uh, start as usual by importing our image. So I'm going to do import. Uh, I mean, import the libraries to open the image. So import CV2, uh, which is open CV. And let's assign our variable image as cv2.imread. And uh, I'm going to import a file called scratch.jpg. This helps me demonstrate one filter. For example, let me open the image right here so you can see this is the image I'm trying to open. And as you can see, this is a tough image to segment using traditional histogram segmentation. Obviously, as humans, we can see that this area has a lot of uh, uh, texture compared to this region, which is very flat. But how do we segment these uh, regions? Well, for that, uh, a good filter, I mean, you can use variance filter that can actually describe this region, but uh, a good one that can uh, really help is called entropy filter. Yeah, if you have taken thermodynamics class in the past or any statistics class, you probably, or even just plain English definition, you probably know uh, entropy as lack of disorder or entropy is a not lack of disorder lack of order sorry and entropy basically is a measure of disorder and uh, in this case if you look at at an individual pixel level i see more disorder in this region than the flat region right here so hopefully entropy filter is going to help us and uh, the way we actually uh, uh, look at this, load this entropy filter, let's go ahead and import the right library. It is in skimage.filters.rank. And again, you can look at uh, the documentation if you want. But entropy filter requires us to define a disk size because that's like the kernel kernel size that uh, we define. So that's also present in uh, SK image dot morphology. OK, morphology uh, import disk. OK, and again, this is just one example. You don't have to use this one. This is just one example. There are so many filters out there. Go ahead and do some research as the subject matter expert. You need to understand, OK, what filter is the right one to describe the features in your in your image. OK, so that's pretty much it. Once I import that, I'm just going to say entropy image equals uh, we imported entropy, right? So and then the inputs are our image. OK, and uh, disk size and uh, let's say disk size is one for now. OK, and by the way, uh, if I run up to here, I should see what my image is. It's a RGB image. We can choose to actually let's actually convert this to single color. I mean, gray level CVT. Uh, did I make a mistake? Color, I think. CVT color. OK, so our input is our image. And let's convert this to gray. I think it's uh, underscore BGR. Again, remember, this is open CV, so it's not RGB. It's BGR to gray. 
Okay, so just for the fun of it, let's run these lines to make sure we haven't made any mistake. Everything works fine. My image is now only a grayscale. You can see the dimensions up here. So now I'm ready to come down and then visualize my entropy uh, image. And how do we visualize this? CV2.imshow and uh, my title is going to be entropy and the image name entropy underscore image. Now do not forget to type this cv2 dot weight key i t k e y. You can provide how many milliseconds you want the image to be open right there, but after displaying the image, destroy all windows. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run this so we can see. This is how the output, in fact, let's go ahead and CV2 imshow original image, okay? So it's easy for us to compare and our original image is just IMG, right? Okay, so let's run this one more time and here is the original image and here is the entropy image. You see how we can use entropy values because here the value is very high wherever we have disorder. Wherever we have some sort of an order, you know, the value is low. So entropy can define, entropy is one of the good features that I can pick to describe this specific image. Okay, now um, what if I have a, a different image and uh, let's actually, let me import, uh, what other images do I have? I think I have an image called yeast cells. Again, these are the ones I just downloaded from the internet, uh, .png, and uh, let's, let's go ahead and do this yeastcells.png, and here it is. So entropy is not a good filter to describe this, as you can see. So this is the original image, and this is the entropy filter, and I see a bunch of nothing. So it tells you the importance of uh, picking the right type of filters. So in addition to entropy, what else should we select? Uh, let's do Gaussian blur, I mean, just to show you. And Gaussian is... Uh, uh, where is the Gaussian filter? I think it's uh, part of, again, let me go ahead and import it right here from SciPy, import ND image as ND, okay? By the way, some of these filters are available in multiple libraries, so use which one uh, you think, uh, you know, most of them should do a similar job. So go ahead and use whatever you think will do a good job or faster job, I should say, sometimes. Gaussian my Gaussian image is uh, ND dot. Does it show Gaussian filter? Yep, yeah, right there. Gaussian filter and the arguments it takes is uh, input is image and uh, let's put sigma equal to three for now. Okay, again, this is uh, the larger the value, the more blurry the image gets. Okay, so our Gaussian right now is Gaussian underscore image. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. And here is my original image and here is my Gaussian image. And again, what is it describing? Well, we don't know. I mean, maybe this is useful, maybe this is not useful for our machine learning. But this is another filter uh, that we can definitely consider. And uh, let me just do one more before uh, jumping on to uh, you know, creating a feature vector. So one more, so Bell, I like this because it's a very good on edges. So from SK image filters, there are a bunch of these, uh, uh, go ahead and look at some of these filters, so Bell. Okay, now I'm gonna do my so Bell underscore image equals, uh, that's it, okay? So let's not use any mask, so Bell, and let's see how that looks like, uh, so Bell. Okay, so let me go ahead and run this and we should see, there you go. So this is the original image and this is the edge, well, or Sobel filtered image, which definitely shows us like all these regions with the uh, hard edges. So this can be a very good filter uh, to separate the cells in this image. Okay, so now I hope you understand how to 
extract various filters. I can literally do this lecture for another hour to show every little filter that there's out there, but then look at documentation under SK image filters and also other documentation, you know, uh, for image filters. But this is how you can actually generate these filters. But how do you put all of this information together to create like a pandas data frame that we can use as input into our machine learning algorithm? Yeah, so for that, let's, uh, again, let's do this in a methodical way, okay? So let's start in the beginning right there, okay? It, things can get confusing if we are not careful. Let me move these libraries up here, okay? There you go. Let me move the libraries up here. And the first thing we do is, of course, read our images. And now for uh, Pandas data frame where we can actually create these feature vectors it helps well in fact it's almost required for us to convert our 2d image you see our image here is 1024 by 1024 right i want to convert that into one single list you know uh, where or one single array if you want to call that uh, so which means i'm going to unwrap my 2d image into one dimensional array Okay, and we all know, again, hopefully, if you watched our previous, uh, my previous video, how to do that. So it's nothing but image2, okay, equals image dot, I, I mean, image2 is just a name I gave, like image dot reshape, okay, minus one. So that's just a shortcut to say, okay, uh, convert that into single. So let me go ahead and run this so you can see how my image2 is nothing but 1048576, that's it. Yeah, one array. I'm just taking these, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, this matrix and then converting that into one single array. So now that we have it, okay, let me create an empty data frame. Okay, again, uh, well, did, I, did we import pandas? Let's go ahead and import that. Import pandas as PD. Again, if you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you haven't watched my pandas tutorial. So go back and watch the tutorial video. But again, so I'm going to create a new data frame, okay, equals to PD. Again, we know how to define a new data frame and I'm going to define an empty data frame. So now I have a an empty, think of this as an empty Excel sheet that I plan on filling it okay with the data that we are going to generate so right now we have empty one and the first data first column remember if we go back to our uh, uh, image for example this image right so first of all what's defining this i mean as we can clearly see the actual pixel value the original pixel value at individual pixel location is a good information is a good feature that describes our data so let's start with uh, our original image so the way i'm going to fill it is i'm going to call my uh, inc or add a new column in my data frame called original pixel values or something okay so original pixel values so it's going to create a new column and fill it with what image two that's it okay so if i run this again if i run this you should see my data frame here is again i have a column name called original pixel values okay that's my single column right there and i have 1048576 entries in there now i need to add another column i think you got the idea here now that i'm calculating entropy here Okay, so let's go ahead and first of all, unwrap the entropy. Remember this entropy underscore image is a 2D image. So we need to unwrap that. So I'm going to call this entropy one equals, okay? And uh, this is, what did we call? Entropy underscore image dot reshape. We are doing exactly the same thing we have done with our original image. So I'm reshaping this so it is again one uh, dimensional. And now I can go ahead and add it to our data frame. And I labeled my data frame as DF. That's why I'm doing DF here. Okay. And the new column name, I'm going to call it entropy. And what is it equal to? Entropy one. That's pretty much it. So for every one of these filters, go ahead and do that. And because I'm a bit lazy, let me copy that right there, paste it, and change this to Gaussian 1, and nothing but... If you copy, make sure you change everything that you should be changing. 
I made this mistake a bunch of times where I forget something and then it takes forever to figure out why things are not working the way you expect them to work. So I think this uh, works fine and let's do this one final time for my Sobel filter. So my Sobel1 equals to Sobel underscore image and this is my adding a new column called Sobel and then so bell one okay and let's not visualize any images we have done that already now when I run this if everything works fine that's good that's a good sign okay now let's look at how our data frame looks like and uh, we can do print uh, you can do the entire data frame let's go ahead and do that first okay so when you print this entire data frame you should see a whole bunch of values right there okay it shows that these many rows four columns and if I go all the way to the top original pixel values, entropy, Gaussian, Sobel. So these are the values. So these are individual feature vectors at every pixel. That's pretty much it. So now our data frame is ready to go into a machine learning algorithm, yeah, uh, where it can train and create a model, okay? So uh, one feature that I did not show you, which is my most favorite feature of all time, because it, turned out to be so amazing in a couple of situations for me. It's called Gabor filter, G-A-B-O-R, Gabor filter. This can be so useful, especially if you are, for example, looking at features that are oriented in a specific direction. Let's say you are working on images, that, uh, for example, from sedimentary rock. And you know from for sedimentary rock, the features, uh, the bedding layers are all horizontal, right? Because that's how they get deposited due to gravity. Now, how do you separate these horizontal layers? By applying, let's say, Gabor filter with an orientation of zero degrees, you get amazing signal when uh, you're looking at uh, horizontal features. Same thing, vertical, you know, angled. So th that's, that's one of the components of Gabor filter. Another component can be uh, frequency, and uh, you can look at sigma. So it's 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 uh, a million filters in one. That's why I love it so much. That's why I'm not covering it in this tutorial. And I'm this is basically a teaser for the next upcoming tutorial about Gabor filter. And because I love it, I'm gonna I'm gonna spare. I mean, I'm I'm gonna dev devote an entire uh, you know a tutorial just on Gabor filter. And uh, let's uh, uh, let's meet uh, in the next tutorial then. Until then, I hope you loved what you saw here. Please subscribe to my channel and thank you very much.